Well, Christmas Day has come and gone, so now it's time for the next seasonal tradition, <laughs> returning the unwanted gifts. That's right. We all have to do it there, huh? A consumer study actually finds that 42% of people plan to return at least some gifts. So we asked KSL consumer investigator Matt Gephardt how we can ensure a return goes very smoothly. Matt? Dan, Ashley, good evening. Yeah, maybe it was the ugliest Christmas sweater ever known to mankind, or maybe Grandma had a great idea. She'd get your kids a karaoke microphone. That's what they need is to be louder, right? No matter what, there's a pretty good chance you've got some returns coming. So here's how to make sure that you actually get your money back when you do those returns. Here at the brand new Amazon Processing Center in Salt Lake City, the machines that were so busy last week getting Christmas under the tree are now busy processing all of those thanks but no thanks returns. But while efficient, conveyor belts have been known to rip off a return label or two. You can make the return super easy. It's part of the reason that Amazon encourages people to make returns in person at a UPS store, Kohl's or Whole Foods, says spokeswoman Natalie Wolfram. They scan my barcode that matches the item that I want to return and they take it off my hands for me. If you do choose to mail back a package, remember that a wet, runny label that nobody can read will not do anybody any good. Tape it from end to end so that if it rains or snows, that label won't get damaged. Be it Amazon or any other retailer, it's also important to make sure that you understand the company's return policy, says shopping expert Trey Boge. The easier you make it for the retailer, the better off you'll be. A missing receipt, ripped off tags, or a torn to bits box can derail some returns, she says. But the number one mistake that we consumers make is procrastinating past the return window. You don't want to wait until the last minute to ship that item back. Boge also says that having pictures of the item you're returning and its shipping label and even putting a note with your name and phone number inside the box are all good things to have in case it does get lost in the mail. If you simply cannot return it, you could resell it, donate it, or if it's really, really bad, hey, maybe it's a nice white elephant potential for next year. Cybersecurity experts also warn, be on the lookout for items showing up in your email inbox saying, click this link to process those returns. A lot of times, crooks will send out bogus, scammy emails, hoping you'll enter your username and password so that then they have your username and password and can go shopping for themselves with a the credit card you have stored on the website. If you got something you want us to look into, let us know about it. The number, 385-707-6153, or you can email me, matt at ksl.com.